Hello, everybody. This is Ione Singleton, a.k.a. T-Dog from The Walking Dead, and you are listening to Dispatch Radio with my main man, Brandon. All right, folks, we have a great guest best with us, and it is great to hear whose line is in any way is going to carry on, and uh, Brad Sherwood is with us. We're going to talk about that and as well as his tour with Colin Mockery. So uh, you guys are headed back out on the road, I think, in September, aren't you again, uh, Brad? Uh, yeah, actually, we have uh, a couple shows coming up in uh, Montreal at Just for Laughs uh, Festival, but uh, then we're back out, yes, on our regular tour as well. Well, it's great to see the CW back in the show and uh, picking you guys up for some more episodes and some more fun. And Is it different working for CW than uh, the other network, or is it just kind of uh, you guys do your thing and they do theirs? And the only, I think the only thing that's different with the show is that they bring in a lot of, you know, extra, like, guest stars to come and play in some of the games, you know, people that are on shows on CW. But the producers and the cast, you know, have pretty much stayed the same. So the format of the stru- show and the structure, because the producers are the same, hasn't really changed much. Is the show different for you? I mean, you guys have been doing this for so long. I know that you've... you're. I, I, we did a little research. I don't know how accurate this is, but they said that you're in. You crossed over into 60 episodes. So, is it a little different for you now, or is it just sort of like old hat for you, or do you still kind of, you know, really look forward to this? Get a little, you know, butterflies. I don't know what to, what's it like for you. Well, I think you know because it's always improv. It, you, you can never really chalk it up as old hat because you're having to make stuff up. So you may trust yourself from having done decades and decades of improv, but you can't rest on your laurels because everything that's coming out of your mouth is going to be something you've never said before. So you have to approach it with that kind of energy intellectually as you're doing a show because you don't know what's being thrown at you. Unlike, you know, you could be in a Broadway play, you're singing the same song every single night, same notes, same words, same steps. This is like a Broadway play every night, but everything is different every single time. So you you can't take it for granted. You just always have to be sharp and on top of your game. Otherwise, you lose it. Brad Sherwood talking to us about Whose Line Is It Anyway, uh, still airing uh, great new episodes on the CW. Make sure you're checking that out. Uh, definitely cross over into yet another season. And it's great to see the network supporting the show. And uh, Brad, how much footage do they air for? I guess each episode is what, probably about 22 minutes or so for a half-hour show. And how, mu- how much footage do we actually shoot per episode? I think that's probably what the people, people, some people probably may not even believe the improv aspect of it, but uh, I, I know about that. But do you guys shoot a lot more games and a lot more footage than the final product? Yeah, we shoot about like 20 games, and they need about five to work for a show. But most often, like every year I've ever done this show, I've gotten at least two, sometimes three, and in a couple of rare occasions, we got four episodes out of a taping. Uh, so, you know, they pick their, if they're only going to get one episode, they pick the five that they thought were the absolute funniest. Uh, but generally, if they get a bunch of stuff that's funny, then they, what they do is they tape after the, after we're done taping all the games, they tape two more intros yep. of, you know, Aisha coming down the stairs and saying, you know, uh, introducing us. And then she'll say, okay, we're going to start the show with, and the producers have made a list of which games they know they want to try and piece together. So she'll do an intro that says on the next game, uh, we're going to start with a game called Hats. Mm-hmm. And then she'll say, we're going to start with a game called, uh, uh, you know, let's make a date. So now they have two whole segments to intro and now they and then all the middle games they can just piece into the middle and then they tape uh, a couple of extra good nights so now they have all the working parts to build you know two to three frankenstein games out of all their best stuff fantastic is there which is why you'll you'll also see us wearing the exact same outfit on more than one episode like oh that's the same shirt colin was wearing for like and, and I haven't seen yes, and I haven't seen this episode. How's that? So, so that's how that's the mystery solved of why Colin would wear that ugly shirt for four shows. Well, that's going to be the theory that we're going to stick to anyway. So. <laughs> Is there still some games that you really love, or there are actually some games that you dread? Uh, I don't dread really any of the games. I, I like the ones that are the hardest ones. So I tend to like a lot of the musical improv, just because you are really so flying by the seat of your pants. You have to thing on key it has to make sense it has to rhyme it has to be about whatever the suggestion was and it has to be in the style of whatever you know musical you know genre or band that you're kind of parroting so you're really keeping a lot of plates spinning up in your brain to do that 
and you and Colin obviously are, are very, very close. You tour together now. You've, you've done that for several years. You've been on tour together. And when you guys are out together, is it hard to kind of blend in now? You guys have been out there. Plus, I mean, Colin's not exactly kind of a blending in kind of face anyway. No, he's pretty famous. Uh, it, 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 the thing is that people who know us from the show uh, kind of know basically who we are because we're, we are who we are on the show. We're not playing characters. Right. So, you know, fans who are you know, appreciative feel like they know us, which is, I think, a better way to be than people that are sort of idol-worshipping, you know, characters like the, or vampires or, you know, <laughs> you know, or teen heartthrobs. That's a, a weirder, creepier, probably more annoying uh, fan base to deal with. Yeah, so uh, blending in, we don't have to blend in. I mean, I actually, I had, I think I have a very good level of, sometimes people recognize me and sometimes they don't, and that's that's the perfect level to be. People aren't interrupting my meals all the time. They're just talking behind my back going, is that that guy that's on that show? That, and, who is you know, that say, guy? What, who is, yeah, who, he's who on that you? What's My Line show. <laughs> Is there, a, is there people that still, you know, what's like the most famous impersonation they ask you to do? Uh, you know, I, you get much of that? Musically, you, you, no, people don't ask me to do that on the street. No, okay. just on, on the show. Yeah. yeah. No, for, for none of us, none hey, of us are going know. to act like trained people monkeys crazy. on the street. Yeah. If people ask you to do an improv game or a hoedown, you look at them and, you know, you say, well, are you an accountant? Okay, well, you do my taxes real quick. Yeah. You know? So, uh, yeah, we're not trained monkeys. We're happy to talk to people, but yeah, we're not going to do a song. Nobody would walk up to Bruce Springsteen and go, uh, sing a couple bars of Born in the USA. He'd look at you like, I'm going I've, to have you I've heard killed. crazy stories. I've heard crazy stories. Yes, so, you right. Know, you know. Crazy stories that are generated by crazy people yes, who... That's true. That's true. Uh, get out of the house. So when you guys are out on the road, you're doing your tour, and that kind of thing, putting together the structure of the show with just the two of you and that kind of thing... Tell us a little bit on what that's like, especially for those fans that really don't know much about the tour. We'll try to publish all the dates that are coming out uh, here over the next few months, and uh, especially they're listening to this over the internet, they can catch maybe some of those local shows. Well, our show is a two-man improv show. It's completely made up every single night. We use a lot of audience interaction. We bring a lot of audience members up on stage and use their suggestions through the whole show. So they're in control. I like to say that we give them the keys to the car and they drive us where they want to go. And our job is just to make the journey funny. So we, we play some games that they might have seen on Who's Line. And then we've created a bunch of various games that are hybrids of games they might have seen on Who's Line or things that we've come up with over the years uh, that literally, you know, hands them the power. On Who's Line, we get a suggestion from the audience or, or uh, you know, someone runs the game from the side. And in this, all that power is given to them. So I think it, it adds an extra element of fun for them because they are more in control of the Colin and Brad show than they ever would be on Whose Line Is It Anyway. Is it tough sort of staying on task with improv that's like that, where it's tough to, like, say this is going to be the end of the game or at some point we're droning on too long? Or how do you guys uh, kind of call the time out of the end of a game for something like that? We, yeah, we try and stop it when it's, uh, you know, gets a nice big laugh somewhere after we've told a little bit of a story. If George that makes sense. Going, out, going out on a high note. Yes, uh, you, always in comedy you want to go out on a high note. And it's, it's certainly over the years you end up in a sketch every once in a while where it's like, oh, we should have stopped it there. And then you got to get back to another fun moment. Uh, but yeah, there's, there's no real formula because it's totally improvised. So you just have to trust yourself that you're going to, do some funny stuff and and keep going until you get something really funny that tickles the audience and then uh, then start another game. I, I found it it was just really f fascinating I, and I know we talked once before and we didn't get a chance to get to this and I really put it a big circle around it in my notes to make sure I got to this is you guys were invited you you, you did the president presidential thing and it's become a YouTube phenomenon as to see Carl Rove get up there participate with you guys I kind of do people still bring that up to you, or is it just sort of like some of the just the nerdy fan of me found? Well, you know, now it's been almost ten years, yeah. so so many of our fans were five when that happened, and it didn't even register for them. Uh, no, it was it was funny. It, 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 the weirdest thing is that you know the two of us doing silly, goofy, you know, fart humor and lunacy, acting like complete imbeciles, somehow managed to you know, perform for all the heads of 
state here in our country. So, you know, it's quite a distinction and honor uh, to get uh, asked to uh, perform when, you know, I did, you know, didn't think I was ever going to really amount to anything, and here I am performing in front of a president. So that was really kind of the fun thing for for all of us to look at each other and go, "What is going on?" Me, all of us, meaning us and our wives and our you know agents and managers, couldn't believe that this has somehow happened. And it's a fascinating clip. We'll probably try to include that on the bottom of the interview, folks, if you don't know what we're talking about. But just to see Roe participate was pretty cool to me. I think he just kind of played right along. And uh, I had no, yeah, I mean. We, we were all sitting at big tables in the room, but prior to the show, we had been sitting there and, you know, watching the other speeches and, and uh, George Bush do his little monologue, which was very funny. And uh, I was looking around the crowd thinking, who could I grab to, to bring up there? Because I knew it was going to be on C-SPAN and all that. And I wanted people that everybody in the room would recognize. You know, if you bring a complete, just a, just a reporter that no one knows who they are up on stage, uh, then they're going to be engaged because it's comedy, but they're really going to all really pay attention. And I would, I wanted to bring up, you know, the president, but they said you couldn't do that. We couldn't take anybody from up there. So I was like, darn it. And I was looking around, and one table over from us uh, was Carl Rove, and same, sitting at the same table was Wolf Blitzer. So I thought, oh, my God, I'm so going to ask Carl Rove to go up there, and he's so going to say no, and then I'll ask Wolf Blitzer. So Wolf Blitzer will be my backup plan, you know? And uh, I walked over to Carl Rove and said, would you come with me? And you know, fully expected Secret Service to just tell me to get lost. And he jumped up and turned around and raised his hands and followed me to the stage, and the rest is internet legend. MC Carl Rove was born. It's a great clip. Yes. And, uh, it was yes. A fun little footnote that Brad can have on his resume forever that he got to. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, it was. With Carl Rove. It was listed in uh, Rolling Stone's uh, top 100 weird uh, moments of rock and roll meeting politics. That's awesome. So uh, I was happy to, to make the list. The we were 25. Life. That's fantastic. Yes. That's fantastic. Uh, throughout your uh, you know social media stuff, do you do a lot of that, or are you not really too, too too plugged into all the social media games that are going on? Well, I like you know I do Twitter and my wife does Facebook, uh, but I've been watching this Pokemon Go phenomenon with eyes rolled up in the back of my head. You aren't you aren't knocking people over in a local church or gymnasium trying to catch some you know no yeah I'm not I'm, 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 creature. Yeah, I'm not catching uh, Pikachu at the Holocaust Museum or the 911 Memorial, <laughs> yeah, see, which was on the news the other night. Logo, yeah. Like, oh, great. That's a, this is so classy. Please feel free to go to the Anne Frank Museum and uh, collect Jigglypuff yeah. in a place where people were hiding to try and save their lives. Like, it's just, it's such a dumb idea. It's a great idea if you're six, you know? I Like... This, this seems to be like a perfect thing for an Easter party or, you know, a birthday party for, pe- for kids from four to, say, 12. But grown adults doing this just seems so stupid. Like, come on, get on a bike and go on a tour of your city. How about you go donate blood? How about that? Instead of running people over or stepping off in front of a bus while you try and collect a Pokemon. Oh, See, this, is like plan- like, this is like planking. It's coming from the, the mouth of, of Brad Sherwood here, people. That he's taking you millennials very, very seriously. Just so you know. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, they're going to look I back on this in in a, in a month. They're going to look back on this and be like, "Oh, this is as cool as Gangnam Style." <laughs> oh my gosh, that's a great reference. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, well, folks, you don't want to miss it. Whose Line Is Anyway is airing uh, regularly on the CW Network. Picked up for more episodes and more seasons to come. And then, of course, we'll link to the dates where uh, Colin and Brad go out on tour again. Uh, tons of dates all through in September and October, but I know there's other stuff out there. I'll, I'll check their website, make sure we get them all listed there for you. And it's always great, as always, to have Brad on the show and uh, kind of go behind the scenes of the different activities on uh, the show and his other things. So it's great to have you on, Brad. Thank you again for your time. Yeah, it was my pleasure. It was good talking to you. Thanks so much.